Yeah. Definitely. And, you know, I think the biggest thing to mention is that we never really knew how much people enjoyed our record. It was a huge underground success, and commercially not so much. And so I think we were kind of um, disappointed with the way our sales went and didn't just didn't know we had such a huge underground following. And over the years, we've come to realize that we made so much more of an impact than we ever Realized. Yes, you guys have because I believe I was looking on eBay trying to find you guys' debut record. I can't even find it. the closest thing that I could find from you guys are the twelve inch um singles of Wishing You Were Here and Jam Jam if you can. Yes. Yeah. yeah, they said the debut album is so rare that people are willing to pay buku bucks for it and I think you actually told me this, Monica, that your folks actually have a copy of that record. Yes, they do. <laughs> <laughs> they have a copy and of everything. <laughs> yeah, and as a matter of fact, I was on, somebody told me that same thing that you're telling me now when I went on eBay and I saw that there was an offering up to $200 for the album, which really blew my mind. Yeah. Mm. Right. Now, I, I want to know this. I'm curious. Do you guys remember Cheyenne? Yeah. I've waited too long. Can you Definitely. tell me where I can find that single? Ch I have been looking for this song forever. I couldn't remember the name of it. Yeah. What happened to her? Because she just came and went, that one record produced by Kyle West. Do you, do you know what she's up to or anything? No idea. Okay, so it's basically a where they now situation. Yeah, we don't know. Yeah, but you can find that record on uh, eBay. That's how I found that record. And I used that instrumental for my top breaks over my PSAs and liners, which is great, by the way. So I got to give kudos to Kyle West for that one. What is the name of that song? Um, I've, I've waited too long. I've waited too long. Okay. Yeah, that's the, that's the name of it. Now, being on Uptown at that time, Uptown was hot. I mean, you guys, Al, Guy, and then later on you had Mary J. Blige and Jodeci. Now, explain to me, what was it like being in Uptown at that time? And then later on, Sean Puffy Combs, who now goes by P.D. the Kids, was an intern, then turned his internship into an a and position at Uptown. What was that like? That was just a magical time. You know, it was a very exciting time in music. And, uh, and Andre was, Harrell is just a visionary. I yeah. Mean, he was just instrumental in turning the entire R&B sound around at that time. And so he is definitely to be credited for um, creating some of the hottest R&B that has lasted for the past 10, well, Mary's still around. Yeah, 20 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's definitely a trip right there because last, I think it was last week or two weeks ago, it was 16 years that uh, Forever My Lady by Jodeci charted on Billboard's Hip Hop and R&B Top 40. And it's like kids my generation, even though we didn't grow up in New Jack and Hip Hop so we listen to that stuff and still it's like you kind of hear a resonance of it like with this current generation, you know, like the samples and some of the lyrics and stuff kind of reminiscent of that time period. Yeah. You know what's so, um, it really blows me away, Jarrell, that your generation, that, that, you know, that you know so much about New Jack Swing. And um, we know that it was, a, a, it was just a histor historical time in music because you had so many young artists, musicians, songwriters that were just incredibly talented. And a time where, you know, someone like Andre Harrell could have his own company and distribute so much talent, you know, and, and it make a mark in history, and it be called something. I mean, it's just, it, it really, it blows me away that you know so much, you mm. know, and you were probably about two or three at the time. <laughs> yeah, because I was three, yeah, three when Heartbreak came out, I think three when Don't Be Cruel came out, two when Make It Last Forever came out, and five when Attitude by Truth came out. So I was just we we bit, because I used to collect, like, record, well, not record, but back in the day, cassette singles. You know they were cassette singles, because they had on the thing CS. Now, I had, like, every, like, troop single and stuff, and I watched video Soul and Soul Train religiously, so it felt like I grew up in that in that period even though i wasn't at that age and i kind of regret not being my age back then because hey if that was the case i would have been at the club every night <laughs> sweating my behind well, off rocking my polka dots it sounds like you love it yeah yeah it's it's not the, not the not the new music but it's kind of like hip-hop rap i think has taken the industry and made it like okay we're gonna make r&b 
very hip hop ish, and I think hip hop soul kind of, you know, was like, okay, we're gonna take more hip hop elements and make it into R and B. Right. 